Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another uh, North American Ice Cream Association Lunch and Learn. Uh, nice to have you here. Steve Christensen is my name. I'm the Executive Director of the North American Ice Cream Association. We love having these Lunch and Learns, and we try to make them available for all of the ice cream industry, whether you're a member of the association, uh, whether you're not. So we are going live on our association Facebook page. Uh, and again, I'll mention this at the end, but also um, we also have the replay uh, on our app, on our uh, members app. So if you are a member of the association and you think, dang nabbit, I missed today's uh, lunch and learn, you can watch the video on the app. Uh, if you are not a member of the association, then we'd love to have you join. It's only $300 a year. The benefits far outweigh the, uh, the downside. And look, in the grand scheme of things, you'd probably spend $300 a year on a nice dinner. So spend $300 a year on a nice dinner, lasts two hours, spend $300 on a membership and get all of these different benefits. So if anyone's joining us, can you just leave uh, something in the comments to say that you can hear us okay? Uh, and where you're uh, joining us from. We've often had people join in from Canada, from Mexico, from all over the uh, States. Elizabeth's manning the... Uh, it's a multi-person operation here. Elizabeth's manning the keyboard. Madeline's behind the camera. Production. Uh, we got a thumbs up, so everything's fabulous. Hey, um, before we jump into it, I do want to mention who have we got there, Liz. Call them out. Mimi and Papa's Gourmet Popcorn and Ice Cream. Nice. Nice to have you here. North Carolina. Or as we say in the business, North Kakalaki. Uh, we got West Virginia here. Who else have we got, Matt? Liz? Anyway, uh, they're, all, they're all flowing in. <clears throat> so we just want to take about a half an hour or so. This is a topic that I think a lot of people feel as though they know, but there's just so much more to creating video content for your socials and for your business uh, that I think we can kind of touch on. Before we jump into it, I do want to give a big promo out to ConeCon. It's the uh, convention and trade show for the North American Ice Cream Association. This year will be the biggest that we've had in association in history. We've got 140 booths. We've got seminars. Craig Culver is our keynote speaker. Uh, and it is from the 2nd, 3rd, and 4th of November in Las Vegas. So, look, trip to Las Vegas, ride it off to the business. Absolutely incredible. Uh, all of the details are on conecon.org. ConeCon.org. Reach out to the office if you have any questions. We would love to see you there. Now, let's talk a little bit about video. And this is kind of going to be a bit of a crossover. As most people know, uh, we run Scoop School here. We've been running Scoop School in St. Louis for uh, 10 plus years. Um, now, I wear my Scoop School hat somewhat differently from my uh, association hat. We're going to talk a little bit of crossover here because we have a ton of experience and really positive feedback when it comes to developing video content for Scoop School. And a lot of the principles that we use in this video content has direct application to your business, your ice cream business. Um, I, I can't stress enough that our products and the way that we make them are just so strong visually. People love to watch the mundane things, the things that we uh, in the ice cream business would say, hey, um, you know, I'm here making another batch uh, that I've done, you know, for the last 20 years. But people love to see just the little snippets or the behind the scenes process. So that's the beauty of our business. Not only does it taste great, but visually it's very striking, both the end product and the process. Let's talk a little bit about the pros and cons. And if you have any questions as we go, please feel free to drop, drop them in the chats or in the comments. We'll answer them as we go. Um, now, I, I do want to talk a little bit about the pros and cons because obviously the benefits of, uh, of, of something always has this kind of reverse uh, process as well. So the pros, the benefits are you really get to take your customer behind the scenes. They get to see the inner workings of ice cream making, variegating, flavor development, uh, and the end product. And again, visually, um, the, the video and the photo content is very dynamic. If you've got someone that's scrolling through TikTok, Instagram, 
anything that's visually happening video wise tends to grab people's attention it encourages more participation on the app and so most of the apps particularly those that are run by meta so facebook and instagram tend to prioritize live content and video content over just static photos because they know the the, the engagement of video particularly live video um, is a lot more and so they want viewers to kind of stay on the app stay there longer so they prioritize content um, let's talk a little bit about the downside of doing a whole bunch of video or things to keep away from uh, the one thing that you don't want to do is basically let people see a very messy or unorganized workspace. So, Madeline, if you want to pan over here, um, there's two areas that you really don't want to uh, have a whole lot of video in. One is in and around your sink area. If you're at the end of a busy production day and there's basically pots and pans and buckets and spades and whisks all piled up here, ice cream dripping down the three compartment sink, you don't want to have that in the background. Remember that people can uh, pause the video, they can screenshot it, uh, and you just so you want to make sure that your environment is as clean as it can. And the second issue is that if you have a flavor rack where you've got all of your um, flavors there, you you've got a lot of proprietary flavor profiles. What vanilla you're using, what company you're using for your hot fudge and your flavors. And you don't want to let that out. You want to keep a lot of that proprietary recipe, proprietary suppliers, uh, very confidential. So just be aware of that. You can do a lot of wide shots uh, in your facility, in your production facility out the front. Um, but you really do need to do a bit of a visual audit before you start filming, just to make sure that everything that you're going to have on camera is clean and that you're not giving away any of your industry secrets. Sounds good? Okay, back over here, Madeline. Let's talk a little bit about equipment because, look, in the grand scheme of things, you can do a lot with an iPhone. And I'm saying iPhone because you Galaxy users out there, I'm sorry, I just don't get it. <laughs> but there are a lot of other equipment and ancillary equipment that you can use in order to enhance this process of doing video in your store. Madeline, let's Let's pan down a little bit, talk a little bit about cameras to start with. So um, a lot of people feel as though they need valuable um, equipment. This is a DSLR camera. Um, it's about $1,200 to $1,500, depending on the uh, model that you get. And I'll tell you that for taking high resolution images, um, it really can't be beat. If you're taking images, marketing images, that you're really only going to use online then you can use your phone and that's fine but if you need high resolution particularly if you're doing uh, posters banners uh, window clings things a dslr camera is really the way to go and we do a lot of filming on this what we used to before the iphones got so well this is a canon uh, sl2 camera um, and again we use it sometimes honestly the iphone has kind of trumped this uh, over and over again very, very good for video, very, very good for stills. I still think that there is a huge place for a camera like this in your store to get high resolution images. Um, a lot of people write off the old GoPros of, oh, well, you know, it's only for action stars. Honestly, one of the highest rated videos that we have on our YouTube channel is me strapping this on my head and making waffle cones, how to roll a perfect waffle cone. Um, and people still love GoPro videos. So if you were in your store, you can actually hook a GoPro up like this to a strap on your forehead. You look absolutely ridiculous, but what it does is it gives your viewers this POV point of view process of you making ice cream, of you rolling waffle cones. Um, so we've used uh, our GoPro here for a lot of different things also, it can give you a separate camera angle. So if you're using the DSLR or your phone on one angle, you can have your GoPro on a camera or on a tripod, sorry, over in the corner to give you some different angles. A lot of people use GoPros like this to set up in the corner of the store and do a, a time-lapse video of your busiest time. So you can basically go through. I'll tell you another thing too, I know some stores use a GoPro to actually stream live. So you can log on to a camera 
or um, a video stream of the store and actually see how busy it is. Um, so that's the camera process. I will tell you that honestly, um, if you invest in a good phone, this is, uh, what is this, a 13, a 12 maybe? Um, this is a great investment for us. <coughs> Excuse me, if you follow most of our video content on uh, YouTube, there's uh, my wife and my little grandbaby, um, then nearly everything is filmed on an iPhone. The resolution is incredible. Uh, so don't feel as though you need to rush out and buy some of these other cameras because, honestly, this will be enough to get you going. Now, as a support mechanism to that, um, we purchased, and again, these are relatively inexpensive. This is a filming frame that we use for all of our uh, YouTube videos uh, and TikTok and so forth. So basically, it's a frame that you can place your phone in um, and it gives you the ability, you can kind of lock that down so it doesn't fall out. Um, and it gives you the ability to put a microphone on the top here. You can put lights on the top. We'll talk about them in a minute. Um, and you've got the ability to be able to actually walk around and give you a nice stable shot. Uh, there are other tools you can use to give yourself stable shots. But honestly, something like this, which costs us somewhere in the realm of about $15 to $25, we use for all of our video content and we're getting i think we've got something like forty thousand subscribers on our youtube channel on our uh, scoop school youtube channel a lot of that content is based just by filming with this frame and this phone so madeline's kind of coming in down on a shot she's coming in and filming me and then coming down and looking at something else it's really a good investment and not overly expensive either so that's that um, now, a couple of things that you'll need to also maybe look at getting. Tripods are a great way to uh, get uh, a nice static shot, or even if you do a live stream, you can have that going. You've got your standard um, shots here, or standard, uh, 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 what's this called? I, uh, a tripod here. <laughs> Um, and then you've got these that actually wrap around things. So when we're filming out on locations, we'll take a uh, tripod like this and we can actually wrap these legs around a light post or a uh, traffic light or whatever, whatever we're going to do. Um, so, again, a lot of these on Amazon are very, very inexpensive, but they're good to have just to kind of give you some flexibility in shooting. If you're out by yourself, um, then it's important to be able to set this up somewhere that you can stand in front of if, if you need to. Uh, some other things that will work very well. Um, we haven't done too many drone shots previously, but there are some uh, ice cream shop owners that utilize drone shots incredibly. One of them is Chinese Dairy Barn. If you follow Chinese Dairy Barn on uh, their socials, They've got a beautiful facility, farmland, barns. Uh, they have uh, drive-in nights, drive-in movies, and they do a lot of content on drone footage. And don't also feel as though the drone footage is only for outside. You can do some great kind of uh, covering shots uh, halfway up the room by kind of having the, the, the drone go sideways like that and film content uh, in HD. Again, this is a DJI Spark. Um, it's probably five to seven hundred dollars, uh, depending where you look at them. But um, if you've always wanted a drone, if you don't have one, uh, you definitely can use that in the process of promoting your business and doing video. A couple of other things that we can talk about. Um, I we don't use this too often, uh, but this is basically a tripod on wheels, so you can actually have a shot of a Sunday or a new cone or whatever, and then put your uh, iPhone on here. Generally, you can get a, come on, mate. You can get a, um, a phone holder that attaches to here, and you can actually maneuver these wheels so you can do a shot that goes around the cone. It's beautiful and smooth, um, and it's a very, very dynamic shot. So um, that's something, again, you don't need them, but I do think that there's some good advantage to doing that. So far as um, other tools, this is a stabilizer. They call it a gimbal. 
Um, and what this does is if you're using uh, your iPhone or some phone, then you can turn this on and then it basically stabilizes the shot. So you can walk in and around your store and have your uh, phone here stabilized so it's not kind of jumping around as you walk. Um, these are a little bit more expensive. They're kind of in the 100 to $200 realm. Uh, but if you're doing a lot of kind of action shots and moving around and worried about stabilization of your camera, a gimbal like this um, is a good investment. We have a couple of them. We don't use them a whole bunch anymore. Uh, but when we go to CGIP and when we go to some of these other big shows to get some really nice looking shots, uh, we use the gimbals. Um, any questions as we go, Liz? Okay, let's talk about mics. Um, I will tell you that people, if you're doing long form video, and when I say long form, I'm talking longer than let's say 10, 15 seconds, and you're talking in it, you want to make sure that the audio is good. And again, a lot of times with a camera, you've got um, the microphone facing out this way. So you're not pulling audio from in front where you're filming, you're pulling it from the side. And if people can't hear what's going on or if it's muffled or it's not strong, then people will, will log out. They just, you, you'll lose interest. Any video... Um, where you've got someone talking or explaining a process is going to be not viewed because the audio is bad. So you've got some options here. These are called shotgun mics. Uh, so they can clip into the side of your iPhone um, and basically direct the uh, audio back in here from front. Uh, you can buy another frame. This is another shotgun mic. You see that okay, Liz? Um, now, the one thing that we've been using and we use a lot right now, and it's very, very popular, you'll see um, uh, people use them in socials and on TV, is this Rode Go process. So you've got a receiver here um, that you'll plug into your phone. And again, when we're using our, um, when we're using our frame here, we'll just slide the receiver onto the frame. So now this is receiving the signal from the microphone that I am wearing. So this is about 180 to $220. Honestly, you'll see this a lot in different videos. People are raving about these Rode mics because the quality is really good. They're very easy to set up. You don't have to worry about different frequencies and things. They give you a couple of dead cats. I call these dead cats um, that basically will muffle the sound of your peas and your pops. Not your pops, pops. But um, And you've more than likely seen this kind of set up somewhere on someone while they're talking about something. So the Rode Go wireless mics, honestly, the best investment we've made in audio in a long, long time. So that's mics. Um, finally, I just wanted to talk a little bit about lighting and some other things that you can do. So this here, again, another little tool that we use um, quite on automatic. I don't know whether is lazy Susan the right term to use now anymore. Anyway, we can basically have this rotate. You can see the cone rotating here. It's got a couple of different uh, options uh, where it turns slowly. So you could set up a phone here and basically have this product, whether it be a Sunday, a cone, a new flavor, and it's rotating around in there. Again, they're not overly expensive. It was about $20 on Amazon. Um, we keep all of our photo and video stuff on a shelf and we kind of amass this stuff over time. Now, if you're using something like this and you're using a lot of product shots, um, then you can buy a background. Oh, no. oh here. Um, so this is called a limo studio and it basically opens up to create a little uh, back I haven't put this together for a while and uh, so you, you can kind of control the background you can put a green screen on it there we go 
So it just pops up together. So then you're putting your cone into the um, into this box, this light box. And then you can set up, and again, we bought this kit, this light box. It came with two uh, spotlights. Um, I don't know. Again, it was $20 or $30. So the spotlights sit on either side, and it gives you some lighting that, again, is pretty dynamic. Um, that will give you nice even or mood lighting. And you can take some videos, slow videos. You can even take photographs in here. This is a really good tool to have. I do recommend that if you're doing product shots, new flavors, seasonal flavors, limited time offers, then this is a great little tool to, to use. Questions, comments, concerns as we move on? For those uh, who follow our YouTube channel and have seen a little bit of our Scoop School content, you may have heard us. <laughs> oh, are you looking at me like that? <laughs> are people saying things, Elizabeth? What are they saying? I feel as though uh, you're holding back on me. No. Um, so for those of us, get eyes up here, come on. Um, for those of us who, uh, um, who join Scoop School, we talk about Frank a lot. So when the pandemic hit, um, we built Frank, and we call him Frank because he was made in a lab, uh, Frankenstein. But we depended so much on video content um, that we have this almost traveling studio where we can do classes and so forth. So Frank has lighting on him here. Um, he's got two microphones or the mic that I'm wearing and another mic. Uh, we have a down-facing camera. And then we put our DSLR or our uh, other camera here. And basically, we can live stream and um, basically take a studio wherever we go. So when we're doing Scoop School classes or live streams and we're kind of going through this process of walking through equipment and explaining equipment, uh, Frank kind of comes along with us and it's a great, uh, it's been a great investment in our business so far as video production. And I don't think you need a Frank, but it does show you how dynamic and how important video is in the process of, uh, of promoting your business. Let's put Frank in the corner. Nobody puts Frank in a corner. Um, now, there might be some of you out there that say, you know, um, turn this fella off, that say, well, I'm not overly confident. I kind of don't really know what to say. Uh, another thing that we use all the time is a whiteboard. Madeline, do you want to grab that whiteboard? <clears throat> so we have a whiteboard here that we use, obviously, for classes and different things. Bring it in. Do we have a name for the whiteboard? We've got names for everything else. <laughs> Whitney is incredible. So this has been standing or set up behind the camera that I've been talking to you on. So it gives me, and again, you may not do some of this long form stuff, or you may, but don't feel as though, oh, well, I don't know what to say, and, and um, I kind of, I, I won't remember it all, or I don't want to look down at cards. There are a lot of things that you can do just to kind of help you in this process of becoming a little bit more confident in front of the camera. And again, it might not be you or one of your employees in front of the camera all the time. It might be more product shots or procedural shots. Um, so uh, yeah, this helps. So what are we talking about next, Steve? We're talking about where to post. Let's put it back up there, Madeline, so I know what you're talking about. Okay, so um, the most dynamic places, I think the most bang for your effort um, is going to be the video and photo heavy platforms, Facebook and Instagram, which both uh, cover uh, each other. If you're providing some content for Facebook, it can automatically transfer to Instagram and vice versa. Um, TikTok is very, very popular right now, obviously. And you've got even some YouTube out there. There are some ice cream shops that have a really robust YouTube channel um, and really connect with their, uh, with their audience. I will tell you that often when we are filming, we will film different content for different platforms, but we're talking about the same thing. So let's say we'll be talking about uh, scooping, the best way to scoop. 
um, we would put a, uh, a, a landscape video and film a landscape video for YouTube and we will film landscape video for uh, Facebook. But then we'll either use a phone and do portrait for Instagram and then we'll just take maybe 10 to 15 seconds of the principle that we're using and use another portrait one for TikTok. You're going to find that TikTok is more about brand building and getting your name out there than it is getting customers in. And I still feel that that's a really important thing to do. I think that if you're recognizable and seen on multiple platforms, then uh, it kind of increases your brand equity within your area. And you may think, well, you know, people from all over the world are watching TikTok. Yeah, but when a, a local customer sees that you've got a TikTok account and they follow you, that uh, process, your video content is being fed to their feed all the time. So, um, again, just be aware that you can't just take one video and post it everywhere. Um, your demonstration videos uh, that are two or three minutes long generally aren't going to connect with people on TikTok. They're scrolling like mad. Um, I will tell you another thing about blended content, particularly with Instagram. People are finding a lot of value on Instagram, but you can't do all video, you can't do all photos just, and you can't do infograms. Um, I find that we, when we're consulting with people and looking at their Instagram account, a lot of times every single image is something that they did on Canva and there's writing on it that says, hey, we're having an open day here, or this is our new flavor. And you can't do all of uh, written or typed images. You've got to blend that up with just image shots uh, as well as video. So some good blended content between, again, that, um, what, what's a good word for that post? Is it like an info? I'm saying an infogram where it's got words, blend it with images, blend it with video. I think you'll be good. Honestly, if you have got a video bank that you continually create content and put it in, I would say two to four times a week is where you really should be posting. Uh, I know stores that post every single day and, and how they do that is that whenever they're creating flavors, making ice cream, they're basically filming it and then cropping some of the pieces out and keeping it in kind of like a, a data bank. So this is a two terabyte disk um, that we have a lot of video on. Um, even the mundane things that you think, um, you know, no one's going to really be interested in me making another batch of vanilla bean. People are interested in that process when it comes out of the batch freezer, you kind of pushing it into the corners there, dressing it with whatever. Don't discount the fact that just because this process is mundane to you, that it's that way for everybody because people love that. Um, and then finally, a couple of things about your content versus trends. And you'll see that, particularly on TikTok, that these trends start rolling in. And when TikTok started off, me as an old white guy thought, why are people just doing the same video that somebody else did? Isn't anyone creating something new? But TikTok is all about trends. And one trend right now on TikTok is where someone's uh, filming uh, coming up to a customer and saying, oh, here you go, here's your vanilla cone. And the customer will say, oh, I ordered a chocolate cone. And then the server will say, oh, we'll, we'll fix that up for you. And they grab the soft serve and they throw it and it hits another coworker in the side of the face. Um, now, you might say, well, I mean, sh should I be doing that? Everybody's doing that. If you, if you go on to TikTok and some of these other platforms, every shop is on this bandwagon of doing that. Some of them are hilarious. Some of them are. Um, so, again, blended content of your own images, your own video, but then have a look and see what other people are posting and uh, get onto a trend where you're also adding to that theme. Last point, um, when you're posting product, make sure you tag um, any other companies that you're collaborating with. Make sure you're tagging your own um, uh, business. Uh, and you can also look at other people's content and repost to yours. Um, often with the association, when Elizabeth's putting together some content, she'll see some great images or video that's used from a, a member store. 
and she'll just reach out and say, hey, can we have your permission just to repost this? It's a great image. Uh, and they'll say, yes, absolutely. We tag them in it and we repost someone else's content, which again gives you a lot more dynamic and diversity in your feed. So um, th this is kind of like a drinking from a fire hose in, in a relatively short video. Uh, but again, I do really feel very strongly that we have a medium here with ice cream, frozen desserts, uh, making it, uh, preparing menu items. Everything we do in the ice cream shop is extremely marketable when it comes to the process of video. And we should utilize it as much as we can. Uh, what have we got there, Liz? Any other comments? Any concerns, questions? <clears throat> we're going to, uh, we're going to uh, continue this lunch and learn process uh, every uh i think we're going to do every third tuesday of the month um because we love creating content that helps you become successful again we repost uh we're going to repost the recording of this on the association app so if you're a member of the association uh please please uh log on to the app uh and then do so um there's a lot of hands going over there what's going on do i need to do you need to bring the laptop over here so i can read some of this stuff
Hey, we're back. <laughs> Can I make a comment on your purchase? Uh, no, I can't make a comment on your purchase. Uh, but you can give us is that you've got to have, um, oh, yes, yes, yes. You've got to have a uh, good, strong internet if you want to want a live stream. So um, that's the, the process of it. I think our internet dropped, and so we, we jumped back on. Um, so the cameras and all the other stuff are back in the lab. So that's why uh, the audio is a little bit crazy. Um, any uh, other comments, questions? I know we've still got some folks on here. Again, uh, a big plug for ConeCon. Uh, two, three, and four November, uh, the week before Formula One. Uh, all of the details are on conecon.org. Um, <laughs> Lev, give us a call at the office and I can, I'll can i comment on your purchase. <laughs> that's, a, that's a great comment. Anyway, thanks for joining us. Um, it's been great to uh, spend some time with you. Again, um, a, a big hearty plug for the association. If you're not a member, we'd love to have you join. I think there's so many benefits to it. Uh, and uh, thanks for joining us. Hopefully, we'll see you all in Las Vegas uh, for ConeCon. Thanks, guys. Have a good week. Bye. End broadcast. And broadcast. <laughs> Still going. <laughs>